I think I'm going to start working on this Walther's REA building. I tried to sell this at a swap meet a while back for $15, and I couldn't get that for it. But I think now, I think I'm just going to build it. I'm going to put it on my layout. It's a pretty nice size building. And one side of the building serves street traffic, while the other side of the building serves the railroad. And here are the dimensions. So it's 13 and an eighth inches long, four and a half inches deep. So I'm going to get this over on my work table. We'll take a look and see what's inside. Well, at some point, I took everything out of the plastic bags. I'm assuming all the parts are still there. So let me pull these sprues out and kind of take a look at what's going on. I don't remember starting this kit, so I think some of the parts came loose from the sprues. Not a problem. Set those aside. Got the infamous Walther's instructions. These instructions, for me, always leave a bit to be desired. But we'll get through it. Some decals. Probably use those. Brick detail looks pretty decent. So when I paint the building, I'm going to try to bring that out. You know, so there's quite a few parts, but you know, a lot of windows. And there's a lot of a lot of glass. Get the instructions out. All right, well, there's the instructions. I'm going to want to put some LED lights in this. So I may want to divide the floors. Just kind of see how that goes. But I'm going to want to put some LED lights in here. Well, one of the first things I'm doing is I'm taking these bays. And you got the roll-up doors here for the bays. And for some of them, I'm cutting part of the door out. Is all of these pieces are closed and I think I'll take I don't know maybe three or four of the eight and open up one or two doors so it looks like there's some work going on I've attached the two ends of the building first and I'm using Tamiya modeling cement which is really great for styrene when I attach the ends, I use these squares to make sure I get the pieces attached as straight as possible. And that should be an aid when putting the sides on. Most of my box cars are 40 footers, but I do have a few 50 footers. And in the future, I may pick up some additional 50 foot box cars. Now, with this door configuration here, and here, take in mind there's a gap here. If these were coupled together, they would 
come together a little bit more. I could put two 50 foot box cars in front of this building and have an opening here and an opening here. I'm taking into consideration this will come this way a little bit. So I should be able to center up those boxcar doors on these openings if I place the open doors in those positions. All right, the street side of the building, I put the doors in the middle and that way you can't look directly through the building. I'm attaching one end to the side at a time. Make sure I have it squared up. I have this corner piece installed. I have the squares here. I try to keep it lined up as best I can. So when I glue the other side, I have nice square corners. Well, I'll try to figure this out as I go, but uh, I need to put a floor here in the bottom. If I'm going to have the doors open, I better have a floor. And I'm putting these tabs I made up for the floor to rest on. Walther's plastic kits are pretty good kits. I like the consistency with the scale. And generally they build into some pretty nice structures. However, sometimes you need to put in a little bit of extra effort. And for instance, with this model, if you look at the corners, I got gaps right in the corners. So I have here a piece of 10,000 styrene. And what I'll do is I will glue pieces of styrene into those gaps. In order to fill the gaps in the corners, I use this, to me, an extra thin cement. And this is the same stuff I use on my military models. Now I have this 10,000 styrene cut in small pieces where it's easier for me to handle them. And I'll go in and saturate this corner with cement to try to soften it up a little bit. And then I'll get my piece of 10,000 styrene. And modeling cement will melt this stuff pretty quickly. Put some modeling cement on this edge. And now I'm going to put it right in the corner. And I'll just try to push it in just a little bit. So it pushes down into that gap. All right, put a little more cement there. And if I don't mess with the bricks, you know, like take and try to burnish this corner, the brick detail will be unaffected. All right, so what I'll do now is I'm going to trim off this styrene. And the reason I had it long initially was just to make it easier to handle. Right. And I'm trying to sand the edges because I don't want to lose the brick detail. Try not to sand into the bricks. 
All right. So you can see where I filled the gap in the corner. And that was a pretty substantial gap. You know, when I painted that, put some primer on here, that was definitely going to show. So I got some styrene, fill in the gap in the corner. Now we'll get on to this last corner, get that done. I have the base coat of paint on the REA building. You can see in the corners here, uh, we got those corners filled in pretty well. Now that I have the base color on the REA building, what I'm going to do is mix up some different reds and tear off a piece of this sponge and then sponge paint different colors on the bricks since bricks aren't a uniform color. They're all different colors. All right, I've applied another color to the bricks. And this time I, I put a medium brown on it. And I'm starting to get there. And I think I'll apply one more color of sponge painting and then I'll go in and paint some individual bricks. I've randomly painted some of the bricks dark brown. And I know this looks like a mess right now, but I think it'll look okay once I get it finished. So I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours, and then I'll move on to the next stage. The clear coat on the Walther's REA building has cured for two days, so I'm ready to move on to the next step with the exterior. While waiting for that to cure, I went ahead and put the floor down in the work area, down in the lower bay, and I started dividing the rooms. And I'm going to want to put some LED lighting in there. So next, I'm going to use some of this Robert's brick mortar formula. And I'm going to coat the exterior of the building with this. And once it dries, I'll wipe off the excess. And hopefully, I'll have some nice highlighted mortar joints. I'm just going to do this side first. I'm going to apply this to my, my bricks. All right, now I'm going to try to pick up any of the excess. Because the more I leave on here to dry, the more I have to wipe off. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that fully dry. And then when it's fully dry, I'm going to take a damp sponge and wipe it off. And hopefully that'll leave the, the mortar in the brick joints. The Robert's brick mortar has dried. So I have an old piece of sponge here. I have a little tray with some water. Squeeze out the excess water. The sponge is just damp. So now I'm going to start wiping off this brick mortar. Just keep wiping it until I get what I want.
All right, well, I'm going to call this into the building good. And I don't mind it being a little bit blotchy. I think that's okay as long as it's not to extremes. And the mortar is a little bit heavier than I would like because it obscures some of the detail we painted into the bricks. But I'm going to do the rest of the building the same way so it all matches. And in the future, I might want to experiment with some other techniques to try to get the amount of mortar toned down a little bit. But overall, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to continue on with the other end and the two sides. I have the Roberts brick and mortar formula applied to the exterior of the Walther's REA building. And overall, it turned out all right. My mistake in doing this was using an acrylic clear coat. So next time I do this, I want to be certain that I use a lacquer clear coat. Because when I use a wet sponge to remove the excess mortar, well, I also soften the clear coat. So I want to make sure I use a lacquer next time. But overall, you know, it looks, it looks all right. So I'm going to end this video here, and in part two, I'll pick up right here. So I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time.